Hi, this screencast is going to walk through installing the Webform module. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the Webform module for Drupal 8. So, how do you install the Webform module? It's pretty similar to all modules in Drupal. You have to download the module, enable the core and sub-module. That's an important detail here is you have to go in and enable the Webform module. It just provides kind of the APIs in a very basic form builder, and you can then enable a sub-module to get a UI. And an important nuance or detail to the web for module is you've got to install some external libraries. And these are the documentation pages for it. You can go visit them. I'm going to walk you through them too here. So, you know, well, what are web form submodules? Well, you know, it's just a list of modules that do little enhancements. This list here, you're going to see the bootstrap. If you're using the bootstrap theme, you should enable the web form bootstrap module. It just improves some integration. Um, you know, the example, I've installed a web MailChimp add-on that's a third-party module, but there's a scheduled email handler, templates, and we're going to walk through these. So it's like the UI module, everyone's going to enable the UI, and that just provides a drag-and-drop UI for moving around your elements. If you don't install it, you're going to have to just edit the raw YAML behind a form. Templates just make it easy to set up starter templates, and there'll be some screencasts about that. Webform node is node integration. And then there's a lot of examples included. So there's an, a main examples module where if you install it you'll get a style guide to look at all the elements and how they look and feel and there's actually some developer examples where you can look at an example of an element a composite element how to build a remote post and finally there's some demos and demos are just kind of groups of forms working together to build different types of systems like an application evaluation system or an event registration system they just help to get you started to see some of the kind of design patterns or implementation patterns you might use within the Webform module to accomplish some more complex workflows. And there is a Webform develop module. It makes it a little easier to export your um, web forms. Uh, it nicely tidies up the YAML for all the elements. It has some also details to, you know, generate data schemas of what, what type of data your web forms collecting. And there is that Bootstrap module, which if you're using the Bootstrap team, you, I recommend turning this on. It just fixes little nuances, little details. And I'm just going to kind of do a very light demo because people should not install modules, but I've already installed the module, but you do get this congratulations message, which actually helps you get started because it's pointing you in some of the directions, which is third-party libraries, sub-modules, and add-ons. For now, let's just talk about you know sub-modules where it just scrolls down here's all your sub-modules that you can turn on and off I kind of recommend exploring all of them and I have a few extras installed these are add-ons like the web form analysis which we'll get to in another screencast um, that's basic I'm going to talk about libraries I'm going to go to the top and there's this link to libraries and let me go over and we'll just talk about library for, for a second and the web form module does depend on external libraries for a lot of feature enhancements and, you know, the Webform model utilizes these third-party open source libraries to enhance the elements and, and, and to provide additional functionality like nuance, like map integration, advanced phone numbers, select to, chosen. It's a lot of libraries. Um, right now it's 17. And they're all optional. That's an important little feature. You can turn them on and off. If you don't have an image picker, you don't need to have the image picker library installed. Um, and that kind of leads to, you know, they're installed in the libraries directory. If you don't install the libraries, they'll be downloaded from a CDN, so your site will work. Um, the Webform module is not using the libraries API. This this is a big heated thing going. Not heated. It's the Drupal community is still trying to figure out how to manage external libraries, and there's different APIs. The libraries API was the traditional one for D7. Um, the way Webform module handles libraries will probably change in the future as. Drupal matures and figures out how to handle third-party assets. And it's important to say Composure is amazing to handle PHP libraries, but not necessarily for CSS and JavaScript, but that is rapidly changing. Um, so the Web4 module provides some Drush commands to just help you download these external libraries. And there's a one to generate a Composer JSON file that you can integrate into your site. You can just do Drush Web4 libraries download, and it will just download all the libraries for you and just take care of it. And then there is this command to help update. If you're using Composer for your whole build, it'll just update that Composer JSON file with the repositories, the latest version numbers, and that's an, a way to maintain it. But it does become a two-step process. So you're going to do like your Composer update, and you'll have to do one of these three Drush commands to kind of get the libraries integrated into your build workflow. Um, just going to demo, like the key thing I'm demoing is I'm going to click over to third-party libraries. So 
this does include this documentation we just talked about, like generating how to use the Drush commands. And there's this other feature where you can add CSS and JavaScript to your entire site for web forms. So you can make little nuanced tweaks. But what I really want to focus is here's all the libraries. You can turn them on and off. The iCheck library has been deprecated. And you can enable and disable. I also want to just bring up, you can go to the status report. And it will help you track your libraries. So let's see what's going on here. Here's all the libraries. It's at 18 now, showing you what's been excluded, what is being used off a of CDN. So if, you, if I didn't have the libraries installed, there'd be a warning here saying you're using a CDN. And you could even say you want to use a CDN. I do not recommend using a CDN for 18 external libraries. You don't get a big benefit because they're not bundled together. Um, rarely are these libraries cached because they're kind of small esoteric libraries. Use CDNs for things like jQuery. Um, that's pretty much it here. I'm going to go back and kind of finish up. I, I think it's important to emphasize the Webform is doing all this work with third-party libraries to help get off the island. It's an expression in Drupal to start leveraging what's out there in the open source community and and use these libraries and benefit from them. And some, get, you know, some are not well as well-maintained as others, but it's worth using them and exploring them. Um, and, you know, some things that you should do after you watch this video, since all the web four module, you know, rec you know, enable some recommended sub modules, you know, the key ones, the UI, the node, review the examples. That's a big you know, that is a great way to get the lay of the land with the web four module. And definitely download the libraries using Drush. You've got to do that workflow. It, just get comfortable with it. Um, and that's it. You can learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. Thank you.